Hello and welcome back to my channel. I have made a tabletop card game from scratch. So this video isn't simply about the game, but how to make a game for yourself. Now I know that there's a lot of people that have a lot of ideas of their own games and what they'd like to do. Perhaps you've played a game and you think, hang on, I could do that. I could make my own game. Well, that's what this video is about. So if that's what you're after, stay tuned. So the game that I've made is Influencer. It's a tabletop card game. The only components are cards. So this video is primarily about designing and making the card component for your game, whether that's a full game or just a card game. So I wanna take you through now all the mistakes that I've made, the progresses that I've made, the things that move, move the needle a bit quicker. And by watching this video, hopefully you'll be able to enter into your own development phase, making it as quick as possible, as easy as possible, and as fun as possible avoiding the pitfalls that I made myself. So before uh, we get into that, I want to give a quick shout out to Ali Raza um, on Gaming Indoors YouTube channel. Um, once you've finished this video, definitely go over and check out his channel. He uh, did an interview with me the other day um, and asked loads of questions that I just wouldn't have thought to uh, engage on or, or respond to. Um, it's from his own perspective, things that comes to mind for him. And often, you know, when we have a back and forth conversation, rather than just me talking to the camera, it brings up new questions, so I definitely recommend checking out that soon. I don't know if that video is going to be uploaded just yet because we only just done the interview, um, but it should be available uh, within the next few days, I imagine, or the next week or so. I'm not sure if this video will go up first or that one, but I'll put a link to his channel below as well just to help you with that. So without further ado, let's get into it. So as of now, we haven't launched on Kickstarter just yet. We've literally just got the prototype, so I'm going to be speaking from this position of how I got to this point from nothing to the point of getting it out there to people, getting good feedback and getting ready for Kickstarter. I wanna tell you about the different stages of prototype that I went through, the mistakes that I made, the things that made it a lot easier to help you get the most out of your time developing a tabletop card game. So the first stage of the prototype I made looked like this. I got a deck of cards, a blank deck um, off of Amazon. Uh, we've got the blank playing cards, blank playing cards, the pack of coloured pens, blank playing cards. You can see I've ordered quite a few. Um, this is what the playing cards look like. Um, so we've got £3.29, Prime One Day, the 60 cards, or you can get two decks, two 60 cards, or 16, just depending on how many you want. Um, so there's quite a few there, so that's off Amazon. And I'm just blank cards I was able to draw on. Um, so this was the first prototype. You see the back of them um, was all drawn on. Um, that was my first mistake, um, but I'll go more into that in a moment. But it took ages to draw on every single one. Um, and then on this side of them, you can see we've got different things that I tried uh, with the cards as I was playing different mechanics. Most, of the, A lot of these cards, not most, but a lot of them uh, didn't actually make it to the final game. We're trying different mechanics of it. But uh, there was a social profile card, um, so I made a whole bunch of those. Uh, signed deal cards originally looked like that. But the point is, uh, they're all hand drawn, so you can imagine how long it takes to draw each of these out, to get all of these straight lines exactly perfect on every single card. I was using a ruler to get it all exactly nice, you know, to get it as nice as possible. So, I mean, there's quite a few cards in here so you can imagine how long it takes and that's the problem is this system well it it works and it's fine if you don't have a printer then this is the i suppose the easiest route to get in a deck together it just it's so time consuming and if you want to change a card up you've got to redraw the whole thing again especially on the back is that on the back of the cards you've got to do exactly the same thing every time otherwise whoever you're playing with is going to know or get to know what that card is and you're not really going to get the best out of the game and understand if it's working. Um, you know yourself when you've got a deck of cards, you've got like a creased corner or something or a crack in it or a rip in it. You know every time you know what that card is because you've had it so many times or you, someone else has had it and they've played it. So you get to know the cards and it you, you want them to all look the same. So the biggest problem uh, was making sure that I had to draw that on every single card. Generally speaking, it's okay, but like I say, the big mistake is the time that it takes. Um, this probably held me back doing this probably about six months. The amount of time it took to draw, redraw, try mechanics, get it back to the table, um, just because it took so long to uh, draw them all up. We've got uh, the social profiles, for example. Um, 
we got we've got one two three four five six seven so we've got seven social profiles you imagine drawing one of these out at, uh, by hand each time i was trying to make them look as nice as possible um you know with nice straight sharp lines um and uh so yeah, it, it took a fair amount of time, but it was fun. It was a good experience and I've got a good memory. Um, this de deck will uh, always remain as a reminder for that. But then I developed a quicker way to do it. And this is where the tips really come out. So it's really going to help you. Um, obviously, if you've got blank cards, you can do that. I wouldn't advise drawing on the back of them, but that, that is one way to do it. It's just to get a quick sketch and get them out and, and going. The other way to do it, if you have a printer, which most people have these days, but I'll give you a tip uh, with regards to printers in a moment. But this was the second prototype I made. So I got uh, an old box that I found around the house. I'll take the cards out for a minute. So I've got an old box that I found around the house. It was for uh, sneaker uh, refreshers. So it was these little um, uh, things that go in your shoe to stop the odor of your shoe emanating around the house. But the box that it came in was perfect, it fit card, so I got those, and then I got a printer, printed some artwork, and then just sellotaped over the top of it to make the lid. Uh, so that was my prototype box. Um, then, what I did with the cards is, I, I printed off the cards, I'll give you an example of a nicer one actually. Okay, so we've got some design on this one, so let's use the copyright one. So, uh, inside here, you will find, um, You've got the print, which is just a bit of paper that I've used on the printer. You've got uh, the back print, so what we have, you know, the back of the card. And then inside here, we've just got a regular card, just a normal playing card, and a plastic sleeve. So you can buy these plastic sleeves. You can get a pack of them. I think it's, I think it's either 50 or 100 per pack um, for about two quid. So you buy those, get a regular playing card to give the feel of a card. So when you're playing them down, you know, you've still got that texture, that nice texture. And then all you've got to do every time you make a new card is just print them off. Um, obviously the back design, whatever you go for, you're going to have printed. Um, so you can just print like a whole sheet of those and then cut out to size. So obviously fit in there with your playing card as well. And then on the front, we're going to cover it with our card design. So this obviously changed a number of times. So as we were playing it, we changed and found different information to add. It started with just the copyright claims. It didn't even have title or anything on it. And then obviously I wrote those on and added the bit in the corner because I realised that holding the cards, it's nice to have a little bit of information. That was then transferred over into a print version um, with the mobile phone style. So, you know, you just sort of develop it a bit more. The wording on the bottom changed slightly and then eventually added a bit of colour and a little bit more information. This was the play cost. So it was just added information as it developed um, and became this. This one obviously changed a few times. Um, some of the cards I've kept the previous prints in behind them just to give me uh, a memory of, you know, the stages they've gone through. But that's the, the copyright claim, uh, that particular card. And your cards will change as well. And so it's obviously, you know, refined a lot more since what it was. And a lot of that is down to play testing. So as you're play testing, you're going to be developing and changing the artwork. Um, and you're going to be changing these up quite often. So having it this way is really helpful because all you need to do is make a tiny little change that's going to have a big impact on the game. And you've got to print the whole thing again. So doing it this way, like I say, you can just print one of those um, or however many copies of the card on a sheet, cut it out to size, put it in. And then th there you go. You've got you've essentially got your card. So we've got a whole deck of those, uh, that style. Um, and this so this was my second prototype uh, stage was having something that would play a lot better. I could make the changes a lot quicker without having to draw, to draw out the whole card. Um, I could literally go into Photoshop, uh, change a couple of you know items on the uh, card, and just hit print and pop it in, and I can have it up and on the table in minutes. Whereas with the hand-drawn deck, you know, I'd take an evening out, you know, get all my pens out, get all the stationery out. Um, to put it together and it would often take a day or a couple of days and then I've got to find someone to play test whereas if someone's there that moment you can literally make those changes and get it to the table straight away. So that was the second prototype. Uh, moving on to what is currently the final prototype and it's where I'm at right now uh, looks more like this. So we've got a proper print and uh, we've got proper artwork um, obviously subject to change because we're not on Kickstarter just yet um, but this was the prototype for that so let me open this up We've got a proper print set of cards, so you can see the artwork has changed slightly, so we've got some colour on this copyright one now. Um, but we can look through those and see the difference 
in all the artwork here is much nicer, much cleaner. So you can see it's much cleaner, much bolder than when it's covered with a sleeve. You're going to lose a lot of the colour. Um, also, when you come to manufacturing, the colour is obviously going to be slightly different um, in the print that they use. You can see that the, the colour variation is slightly different. So getting a test print with a manufacturer as well by using a test print as one of your prototypes is really, really helpful as well. Um, Ali Raza talks a little bit about that on his channel as well. Um, and it's a really good uh, point to note as well. So definitely look to get to this stage um, at some point and don't just stick with the previous prototypes before you get to Kickstarter. And the texture and feel of it, the whole experience of the game is lifted completely. One thing I've found um, going through this process, going from each of these different prototypes, is that the inspiration that you get while you're playing the different types of prototypes, as the prototypes get better and better, the inspiration that you get to make tweaks and changes uh, from that definitely comes as the process moves forward. So I definitely recommend moving forward. But you know, doing it this way takes ages. The second prototype, I think in future I'd probably go straight to this. As for printers, now the um, uh, Argos have got a really, really good deal on printers where you get six months free printer ink, um, and you can stop that at any point. But you'll basically get fr with six months free printers ink, you can print as much as you want over that time. Um, and this was really helpful for me, particularly when I was doing the second prototype. Um, I found I was making a lot of changes using a lot of colour, a lot of ink, because I wanted the best look possible for my prototype, because I wanted people to enjoy it and engage with it on that level, um, particularly when I was taking it to pubs and cafes, you know, people that aren't necessarily board game designers or playtesters that aren't used to seeing lower quality, they want high quality and expect to see that, and I think when I presented it that way, just people have engaged a lot, lot more. So that, that has been great with the second prototype. The printer I got from Argos, uh, so it's the six months instant ink. So what they do is um, as you are um, using your ink, um, they will send you an additional ink package. So you've still got one in the machine, then you've got one in hand at home as well. This is the instant ink here. So that, this will be in, uh, with you. They'll send that out the moment you sign up to it. Um, and then when you run out of the one in the um, uh, in the printer, they will tell you to install this one and send you a new one out so you never run out of ink. And the benefit is the cost that it would usually cost you for ink is quite a lot of money. Um, because it's the uh, six months free ink, they actually uh, charge you a pound, um, but the amount of ink that you use over that time is, is really, really good. Um, but like I say, you can cancel it within that time period. So you've got your prototype, you've printed it out, you've done a lot of variations and you've gone to your manufacturer um, to get a test print for your final prototype. When you get to this stage, you've probably done a fair bit of playtesting by then. Playtesting I want to talk about in another video because um, playtesting is a massive, massive leg up when it comes to um, letting people know about your game, letting people know that it exists, the process, um, how to, you know, drum up support for your game, things like that. I want to get that. That's all for another video. Um, so stay tuned and do subscribe to the channel if you want to follow this journey. Um, but that's to get it to this point. Um, by this point, I've also got publisher interest from different publishers, um, spoke to different publishers. Um, that's, again, that's part of the playtesting experience, but also uh, by taking it to print and the print, you know, it, every stage of the way you're exposing it to new people. Um, and so they get to see your game, see it develop. When you first start out, the playtesting process isn't uh, in, entirely easy. Um, there's a lot of knockbacks and things like that. But again, we'll talk about that in another video. But for now, um, that's how to create your game um, in terms of the components themselves. In terms of the mechanics and playtesting, that'll be for the next video. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that was helpful. If you've got any questions, drop it in the comments. Um, I would love to support you and encourage you in your own journey to make your game. It's a wonderful experience. Um, really, uh, really fun, uh, really social. There's just so many positive aspects to it. So if you've got a game idea, um, I would 100% encourage you to take that journey. Subscribe to this channel, get in touch, and I will see you soon. Cheers.